be interesting. And I think there has to be some understanding that what we want to do for 90 minutes is not going to work for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, and teams are going to figure that out and solve us and solve what we're trying to do in that particular moment. And can we adjust? And that's going to be the big challenge. When Gio Reyna came on the show and I asked him about what happens if Wales sets up like Japan and you can't get the ball, what are you going to do? And his answer was, well, the coach has a plan. I'm just going to follow the plan. That's an answer, Heath Pierce. That is an answer. And, and, and I love that answer because I feel like it's throwing a little shade at the coaching staff. But it, it just we have to we have to make sure that there's room to adapt. And and we're gonna, I mean, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. We're saying a lot of the same things. So so ultimately it's gonna be how we move and how we how we go together is it's gonna be predicated on who we start. And and then it's gonna be uh, But you know, but, but are you, you are you getting how... more nervous? Are you getting more nervous since I... as we're getting closer or are you getting more confident? Because that's um, I, I'm I'm I feel like I'm getting more nervous. Yeah, I'm getting more nervous for sure. But I also don't want to get to the point where it's like paralysis through analysis, where like I feel like our national team in the last months has gotten stuck in this mindset of like trying to play genius football or trying to do things that don't fit within because we're trying to push ourselves to the brink of our comfort zone or outside of our comfort zone. And now we need to go back to simplifying it. And you know how it is, Jimmy, on the field. There are times where we say, you know, what, we're going to go out and press and one of your teammates decides yeah, that's sort of that's sort of what I'm going to do. Right. And and now they're breaking the press on us every time because somebody's arriving late or we're not pressing together yeah, or yeah. The, the, the pressing isn't understood. And that's when you need to have when I when I look at the team, these leaders that say, guys, OK, just sit in our mid block. Let's tighten this up and make it hard or force them wide because they're showing us. Yeah, we thought they were amazing wide, but they're not doing anything wide. So force them like that sort of like understanding. Um, I think is what's going to be more important than anything Greg Berhalter does because you go into it. And again, I go back to the Women's World Cup. There was all kinds of rumors, some of which I think were, were, were significant, that the players and Jill Ellis did not get along and that the players were going to come together uh, despite anything she wanted and to spite what she wanted to show that they can win United regardless of what... Um, the game plan was or what the the tension was in the locker room they came together and united and this that, group that's, is going to have to do that that's an experienced team you're talking about the women's world cup though that is the true. Team. that is a very experienced highly successful win almost every competition they're in women's team and this is a team yeah. that's not like that they're not the same age they don't have that savvy they haven't been around they they haven't seen enough of a of a life let's say to understand the repercussions of a potential decision that's gone either good or bad and then when you've lived as long as I'd say some of the girls, uh, excuse me, some of the women on the women's national team, they, they, yeah. but having said that they have more pressure than any sports team we've probably ever produced in the U S other than maybe the redeem team, uh, to go and win, uh, the world cup at all costs. And with that type of tension, there needed to be that, 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 that unity. Right. So I, yeah, I, I, um, I agree with you though. There is that, that you can't, you so, can't fabricate experience uh, to do that, but they're going to have to tap into something that brings them together where even if it's one player, even if Walker Zimmerman says, guys, everybody in my hotel room tonight, we're going to talk about this. Yeah, sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we've gotten to this point, whatever. F the rest, F this, F that. Here's how we're going to come together. When things go bad, we're going to all look each other in the eyes and and and, and do that. And again, when I, when I played with the national team B team, uh, a couple of times or not our A team and you don't have the leaders that you can look to, you still had to look within your group and and find who was going to rise to the occasion or who was going to lead by example or lead verbally. And they need to be able to come together to do that because they will get punched in the face at some point. And they need to have that unity and belief that we've been hearing about this team that gets along and everybody has so much fun and all these personalities that can, they can get out of these types of things. Well, we're going to find out how true that is once the whistle blows uh, against Wales and how together they are if things aren't going well. One of the reasons that's made me a little bit nervous is that I went on a podcast recently that had a host that's Iranian. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to predict how I thought the group stage was going to go. I'm like, sweet, buddy. This seat just got a lot hotter. Appreciate that. But when I asked him, I'm sure everybody wants to know what I, was, what I said, but I'll, I'll get to that. When I asked him what he thought, he thought Iran had the advantage over the U.S., and Wales because of our lack of experience. Obviously, Wales hasn't qualified for a World Cup in 58 years. 
we have a bunch of players that have never played a World Cup and are still very young, and that Iran does have that experience. They know what it takes. They were unlucky not to get through the group stages in 2018. A couple things didn't go their way, the fine margins. Mm -hmm. You have this Wales team, though, as we started to have a further discussion. This core of players does have quite a bit of experience. They obviously have to get through a tough, tough European qualifying phase, and we have our own difficulties over in CONCACAF for, for our own reasons in this part of the world. So I'm not going to say that is the only thing, but this is the team that got to the, the Euro semifinals in 2016, got out of the groups in the Euros last summer, and, and they have cut their teeth in high-pressure situations and have found success. And that leaves us. And then that just gives me, as much as I feel like the youth is, is valuable and fearlessness and, and having a chip on their shoulder, having everything to prove and all these kind of intangibles and narratives that we can build, we still haven't put what is it rubber to the road or whatever we haven't yeah. we haven't we haven't proven anything yet and these other teams have in other various ways and so and have that experience to know how to fight through some adversity and know how to solve these problems that you're talking about that yeah okay maybe they're probably still having the same conversations you go to wales hotel and and they're having okay guys listen this is this is it this is our golden generation's chance to play in the first world cup let's do whatever we have to do let's sacrifice you know i mean if we can put ourselves in their shoes that's what they're saying and they're probably looking at the U.S. as we just need to punch them in the face because they're not old enough to know how to respond to that. And that gives me a little bit of nerves as I start to how would I act if I was on either one of those? other England, I'm leaving out of it because they know they, they want to beat us. And I actually think that we'll probably play our best against England because we'll be the straight underdogs. We got nothing to lose. And I bet you we play a little bit more free and relaxed than that one. But mm -hmm. the other ones people expect us to beat. And not to say that I don't have that same expectation, but I just don't think it's going to be as easy as it might seem based on the size of our country and the sizes of theirs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I, I look at Iran and I see experience. I see them bringing in an, an experienced manager again. I see them feeding off of not necessarily an underdog role, but what is perceived to be an underdog, knowing that they're good enough to be able to try to get results against uh, or, or, or get results against the U.S. They are definitely good enough to beat the U.S. They're definitely good enough to beat Wales. Um, and Wales probably feels the same thing, right? And that's a dangerous group. But that's where I like this, our, 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 our players and, the, and the, the quality that they have, the level that they're playing at right now. Um, yes, there's injury scares, and we can speculate. We can get into the minutia of all those types of things. But when I look at the way that they can match up in a game that matters and in a game of consequence, I have yet to see the, our U.S. national team fail with this group, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't play, we played horribly in, uh, no, that's, that's a little extreme, but we played pretty it's, it's bang dramatic. average in, in, in the nation's league final. Mexico was better. Honduras was better than the U S for large portions in the semifinals. We won the nation's league. We played pretty average in the gold cup final. We came out of that scrapping and fighting. It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't playing somebody off the pitch. I don't even remember a game in either of those competitions that we played somebody off the pitch and then got into qualifying. We're up against the ropes, down a goal against Honduras, away from home. The team found a way and battered Honduras in the second half and have continued to go through that. Yes, it hasn't been pretty. Yes, we should finish on top of our qualifying if our ambition is what it is. And I know we can set these higher, higher standards. But so far, this team has found a way under duress to, to at least put together somewhat of a, 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 a performance that is hard to beat and hard to play against. And it's not pretty. And that's what I keep going back to now, whether that was lucky or that's the pride of the crest or whatever these things is that are, the things are that you, are hard to explain i'm hoping that comes out in the world cup against iran against especially wales in the first game that we're able to go and get three points even if it's as ugliest of a match we've ever seen from this u.s national team yeah i don't really care how it looks i just want to make sure we get the result but i'm a firm believer that you create your own luck and we did create our own luck in those matches that you're referencing i think what's interesting if we look at the fine margins of all those particular games we did it on set pieces, and I feel like that's something that's been lacking over the last, let's say, six friendlies and maybe even at the back end of World Cup qualifying where we haven't been as sharp. And again, if you're scouting us, that's one area that you think, okay, this is where these guys score. This is where they like to have a lot of success. This is what gives them belief. They hit the back of the net. If we score first, I'll feel really good about the rest of the Wales game. But if Wales scores first, even though we fought, fought back before, I just worry that Wales are – their experience of knowing how to shut up – or shut it down and, and set up shop right in front They're obviously holding off ukraine to, to book their ticket here um you know i don't know i i just again i'm 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 just getting a little bit more nervous that's just me being as transparent as possible as we start to inch a little bit closer <laughs>